Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Darcy James Argue, Grammy-nominated composer and band leader and leader of the internationally acclaimed 18-piece ensemble Secret Society. Darcy is here to show us how to teach the listener how to listen to your piece. Thank you, Dan. So I recently had the opportunity to see Stephen Sondheim's dark bloody masterpiece Sweeney Todd on Broadway and I was reminded of what a great opening line the show has. Uh, The very first lyric we hear delivered directly to the audience is attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. In this one line Sondheim cleverly and succinctly tells you everything you need to know about the show you're about to see. Sondheim has actually written about this in his wonderful book Finishing the Hat. He says the alliteration on the first, second, and fourth accented beats of Attend the Tale of Sweeney Todd is not only a microcosm of the AABA form of the song itself, but in its very formality gives the line a sinister feeling, especially with the sepulchral accompaniment that rumbles underneath of it. In other words, uh, this line not only sets the mood, but introduces the listener to the structure of the song as a whole. Like Sondheim says, it's a microcosm. Another piece where the introduction functions as a microcosm is Steve Reich's Music for 18 Musicians. In his composer notes for the piece, he writes, the structure of Music for 18 Musicians is based on a cycle of 11 chords played at the very beginning of the piece and repeated at the end. Each chord is held for the duration of two breaths, and the next chord is gradually introduced and so on until all 11 are played and the ensemble returns to the first chord. Now, following this introduction, we get 11 sections, each one based in turn on one of the 11 chords we heard at the beginning of the piece. In other words, the introduction is a microcosm of the large-scale harmonic plan for the entire composition. I have also used this kind of microcosm in my own music. Uh, For example, uh, in my piece Zeno, recorded by Secret Society on the album Infernal Machines, I use the 10-bar introduction to introduce the four main rhythmic cycles that are used throughout the piece. Uh, Zeno is is written in 3-2, but that meter is really just a container for all these overlapping rhythmic cycles that create time paradoxes, which is what the piece is about. So the first cycle we hear is played by the guitar. It's the classic 5-4 Mission Impossible pattern we all know. Right? Uh, The twist is that we aren't in 5-4. Like I said, we're in 3-2. So there is a disconnect between the guitar's 5-4 rhythmic cycle and the 3-2 harmonic cycle, which alternates between two chords that each last one bar. And so on. It turns out that when you combine the rhythmic cycle with the harmonic cycle, you actually get a big cycle that is 10 bars long. So the next instrument to enter is the piano, and it introduces the second rhythmic cycle, which is a 12-8 pattern. Clear enough. The third instrument to enter is a percussion instrument, the pendero, a kind of Brazilian tambourine. Now, the basic playing pattern for the pendero is thumb, fingers, heel, fingers. So there's actually a two, four cycle built into the way the instrument is played, like one and two and one and two and. You can mix that up with accents, but fundamentally what we hear from the pendero is two, four. Uh, The fourth and final instrument to enter is the bass. The bass actually has a two-bar cycle, which alternates bars of 6-4, 1-2-3-4-5-6, with bars of 3-2, 1-2-3-4-5-6. And it goes like this. 1-2-3-4-5-6, 1-2-3-4-5-6, 1-2-3-4-5-6, 
Uh, now listen to, let's listen to all that put together. These four rhythmic cycles form the backbone of the piece. Uh, introducing them each in turn lets the listener understand what they are and how they all fit together. Uh, now let's listen to how the main melody sits on top of those rhythmic cycles. For the rest of the piece, I'm going to take those four rhythmic cycles and work with them in various ways. For instance, here's how those cycles are transformed into a 3-2 rock groove at the top of Ryan Caberly's trombone solo. So you can hear how beginning the piece by shining a spotlight on those four rhythmic cycles functions as a kind of uh, rhythmic Rosetta Stone for the entire thing. Uh, writing an introduction like this that presents the piece in microcosm can be a great way of front-loading the information the listener needs in order to listen to the whole thing. Going through this process of trying to distill your ideas down to a single, succinct concise microcosm is also a very good pre-compositional exercise in its own right, even if you eventually end up going in a different direction for your intro. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.